We often get asked what life is like sailing with dogs on board. I think the answer to that question lies in the definitions of the word chaos, challenge and fun. In this video we are going to discuss a few aspects of sailing with dogs, so stick with us. First up is our boat setup. When searching for our new boat it was important for us that the aft arrangement was dog friendly. Ideally we were looking for a sugar scoop boat which would allow us to get the dogs on and off the boat easily. Let's just say that our dogs are not the lightest. We don't have a gate installed, at least yet, so when docking we do our best to position the aft within a suitable distance of stepping onto the dock. A while back we purchased a cheap car dog ram from Amazon. Although it's meant for a car, we found it incredibly useful and it made our life much easier. We use it at the aft of the boat to provide a stable ground for the dogs to get off the boat, but it can also be used on the side of the boat as well. Ragdoll seemed like a perfect boat for us because of the sugar scoop arrangement, but more so because the companionway steps are much bigger, wider and not particularly steep in comparison to other boats. They're very safe under passage for both humans and dogs alike. To keep the dogs safe under sail, we don't let them out of the cockpit if we're excessively healing. They stay with us in the cockpit and only ever go out with us on deck. Other times, if we're having an easygoing sail, they'll often relax on the double deck bed and enjoy the views and fresh air breezing through their floofsters. There are of course occasions when we feel the dogs might be safer, and often drier, inside the boat. We recently completed a saloon refit and now have a big, single bed, mattress sized seating area where the dogs are allowed to lounge. This is currently their favourite sleeping spot. Other than that, and prior to this mod, we had an oversized bed tucked under our saloon table where they could safely retreat. As it was tucked in between the two seating areas and the bed tucked all the way around, they had a really cosy, safe spot and wouldn't be slipping and sliding everywhere. We don't use life jackets. Now, before anyone jumps at our throat, note that it is with good reason. We have big dogs, who are very competent and comfortable swimmer, but they're also clumsy. Our dogs are big, meaning that putting them in a large, clunky life jacket costs more harm than good. We had an incident where Hachi was resting on deck, and when attempting to stand up, his life jacket caught itself on a cleat, and in a true dog fashion, he freaked out even further, fell through the lifelines, and was hanging off the boat being held on a cleat by a life jacket. Not an ideal situation. We much prefer harnesses with lift points. We have buoyancy aids for our dogs, but they come in use at anchor when our dogs can jump off the boat into water and be easily left it onto our aft when they swim back to the boat. We know our dogs, we know their capabilities and we know their weaknesses. And we have alternative safeties in place should the worst happen. For example, we always tow our dinghy, which we know is less than ideal, but our dogs know how to swim to the dinghy and are able to get into it from the sea. Overall, for us, it's a matter of common sense and assessing the sea state conditions as we go. Owning three dogs means routine is important for us, both for our sanity and theirs. We've already discussed their sleeping arrangements, so let's chat about the rest of their day. The routine of course changes depending whether we're at anchor, in a marina or on the move. If stationary, following morning breakfast we take them for a walk, whatever the weather, whether we're in a marina or at anchor. If under sail, they'll simply go to toilet, on deck or in the cockpit. What happens next depends on whether we're moving or not, and whether we need to work that day or not. If it's a work day, then we'll come back, work and take them out again at lunchtime. At the end of the work day or on days off, if we're not sailing, we tend to go out and explore our cruising grounds, splash in the sea and enjoy what boat life has to offer. This, of course, varies depending on where we are and what the weather is like. Under passage, life isn't particularly different, except rather than take the dogs ashore, we let them go to the toilets and do their business on the bow or in the cockpit, where it can be easily cleaned up. This brings up to the wonderful topic of poop. We trialled an artificial grass patch, which our dogs generally didn't take to. They of course, like all dogs, prefer to go to toilet on land. However, when they do need to go and we're underway, they will go do their business either in the cockpit or on deck, depending on the weather conditions at the time. This is something that took them a while to understand, and of all three, Hachi is the one who will hold out the longest before he really has to go. He's a very, very proper dog. Whether in the cockpit or on deck, the cleanup is simple. I don't think that needs to be explained. In our opinion, what's most important is training and ensuring that it's a positive experience for them. I cannot tell you how many times I excitedly squealed at the dogs whilst they were doing their business on board in order to make toilet on the boat a positive experience. Treats don't go amiss either. Living in a boat is essentially like living in a bowl. And with three hairy dogs, that can be somewhat daunting, especially during shedding seasons. 
It's no like to say that our boat requires much more cleaning than if we didn't have dogs, but that's a compromise we are willing to make. Frankly, it isn't much different from having dogs in the house. Rubber brushes, dog hair removing rollers and a hoover are no strangers to our daily life. We find that a quick five minute cleanup twice a day keeps them manageable. Our dogs love swimming and some love digging in the sand even more. <coughs> Luna. For our own sanity, we don't let them inside a the boat if they can safely dry out outside. We also have a fresh water shower on the aft of the boat, so if they're overly mucky, we can simply rinse them down. On a cooler day, you may see them walk around on deck in their fashionable dog wrap towels. On a hot day, our dogs tend to spend most of the time in the shade on their double deck bed. A boom tent keeps the temperature below low and comfortable whilst they have a view of the surroundings and at least some wind blowing through their fluster. As they love swimming, we let them cool down in the sea and wash our cockpit teak down with cold water to ensure it doesn't burn their paws. Cooling mats and paw protection gels are again no strangers to us either. On the really hot days, we avoid taking them ashore in the hottest sun so their outings might just be morning and late afternoon. But more often than that, they will splash in the sea in between. And last but not least, here are some answers to our most frequently asked questions. If only dogs could talk, we would like to think that they do. Our dogs love our company and are always up for an adventure with us. Do they look happy? Our golden retrievers are like fish to water. They love swimming, diving and playing in the sea. Be it swimming, jumping off the boat or paddle boarding, they're all in. This vastly depends on where you're traveling to. For us, leaving the UK requires a good chunk of organizing paperwork and animal health certificates since the pet passports have been removed post-Brexit. However, once you wrap your head around the processes, it's not that difficult to organize. However, it can be expensive. In the EU, dogs can obtain pet passports, which allow them to move freely. If traveling outside of the EU, be sure to check each country's specific requirements as many require particular warming, titer tests, extra rabies shots, and more. Is it difficult? Is it not really stressful? Having dogs on board is something you adjust to. We always have them there somewhere at the back of our minds when sailing, anchoring, docking, or picking the next place to visit. We wouldn't say it's difficult, but you do have to take into consideration the needs of your pets. You know your pets best. Our dogs have grown up spending a large proportion of their time on the boat since they were just a few months old. This allowed them and us to adjust to boat life. If a situation can become stressful, we will put the dogs inside the boat where they are safe and we can focus on whatever it is that's happening. Each one of our dogs has fallen in once. Luckily, all of these times have been at anchor. They've actually fallen off pontoons more times than that when they were goofing around. When they fell off at anchor or in the marina, they swam to the aft of the boat where we waited for them and picked them out of the water. This is something we actively practice when I anchor in nice weather. They jump off to play and fetch and then swim back to the aft. We are dog people. Dogs are not our whole life, but they make our lives whole. People say that a dog is the only thing on earth that loves you more than it loves itself. It's true. Although sailing with dogs on board poses challenges, cruising without them just wouldn't be the same. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions that we haven't answered in this video, leave us a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe and till next time.